Hello and welcome back to Supply Chain Management. This lecture is going to talk about what a supply chain actually is. And hopefully you'll understand a little bit more about what a supply chain is. So what is a supply chain? All stages which are involved directly or indirectly in fulfilling a customer request is essentially part of a supply chain. This includes manufacturers, suppliers, transporters, warehouses, retailers, and customers. So all functions involved in fulfilling a customer request comes under supply chain. This includes product development, marketing, operations, distribution, finance, customer service. All these form a chain and they result in fulfilling a customer service. So the customer, as you can see, is the integral part of the supply chain. And the supply chain includes movement of products from suppliers to manufacturers, then to distributors, and also not just the product, but also information, funds, and products in both directions. So if we look at typical supply chain stages, they would involve customers, retailers, wholesale and distributors, manufacturers, and your component and raw material suppliers. Let's take an example of a supply chain of our Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble, produces multiple fast-moving consumer goods, such as shampoos, I think Heads and Shoulders, or Pantene is probably Procter & Gamble, um, soaps, and they, they produce a, an array of different products, which are called fast-moving consumer goods. So let's take an example. Um, their raw material suppliers could be a timber company and a chemical manufacturer, the timber then goes to a paper manufacturer, whereas the chemical manufacturer then goes to a plastic producer. The paper manufacturer then goes to Pactive Corporation, which produces the packaging for Procter & Gamble. The plastics then sends the molds to Procter & Gamble, which produces the product and then packages it and then sends it to Walmart or a third party distribution center and then finally where you go to the Walmart store and get it from a customer. So this is kind of the supply chain. So if you look at internet-based um, shopping, and especially propagated by Dell, Dell actually skipped this entire process here when it started selling online. So the objectives of the supply chain, what do you want from a supply chain? Well, we are looking to maximize the total value generated. So supply chain surplus is essentially the value the customer gets minus this cost to the supply chain. So wireless router, which maybe is $60, and then you got to subtract the sum of all the costs, cost of information, storage, transportation, production, assembly, which will give you the supply chain profit. And if you ended up with a profit, total supply chain that's a success and success is not profit at each individual stage so it's not a profit of one company but it's the profit of the entire supply chain so what are the sources of revenue for a supply chain well the only source of revenue is the customer everything else is a source of cost whether it's flows of information flow of product flow of funds so effective supply chain management manages supply chain assets and production uh, and the product, information and funds flow to grow the supply chain surplus. So the different decision phases in a supply chain. Well, in this class is, is going to be broken up and we have stage one, which is your supply chain strategy and design, which talks about how a company structures their supply chain over the next several years. So this is a long-term view, and it talks about how the company is actually uh, setting up the entire supply chain. The second part is supply chain planning, which is decisions over the next quarter or year. And this class is completely focused on this part 
of the supply chain management part. And finally, you have supply chain operations, which is daily or weekly operational decisions. And this is something that um, when you do inventory management and things like that, um, this is phase three. And this is a very short term view. So we move from long term, medium term, short term. So let's talk about the long term supply chain strategy and design decisions. This involves configuration of the supply chain, uh, how you're going to allocate resources, processes each stage will perform, and they must support the strategic objectives. As you already talked, uh, looked at the overall strategy of a firm, supply chain strategy or decision, design decisions must support the overall company's strategy. And these are long-term and expensive to reverse. So here are some uh, functions. Outsourcing, whether you want to up outsource some of the supply chain functions. Uh, location and capacities of the facility, whether you're going to own your own warehouses, how big the warehouses have to be, what is the factory, do you need to have a dedicated factory or not, the products to be made and stored or stored at various locations, how you're going to transport them, and finally, information systems. These are long-term investments, require a lot of money, and once you have set it up, it's hard to backtrack from these de decisions. Supply chain planning is about a year or less, maybe six months or a quarter. It's a set of policies that govern short-term operations. So while supply chain design a strategy, this is more tactical, uh, and it's fixed by the supply configuration from the strategic phase. So the strategic phase actually constrains what you can do in your planning. The goal is to maximize supply chain surplus given established constraints and it always starts with the forecast of demand in the coming year. And this is also what you're gonna do in the class. The first thing you're gonna look at is demand forecast. And we consider demand uncertainty, exchange rates, competition, and then we, we plan for the next six months to the year. So supply chain pl planning includes which markets will be supplied from which locations, plan buildup of inventories, whether you, how much you're gonna subcontract, inventory policies, timing and size of market promotions, all these things come under supply chain planning. And finally, we come to the operational plan. So remember, we started off at strategic, we went to tactical, and now we're looking at operational, where the time horizon is weekly or daily. And so here the decisions are very microscopic. We, we go to individual customer orders. Supply chain configuration is fixed and planning uh, policies are well-defined. The goal is to handle incoming customer orders as effectively as possible. And there is much less uncertainty since there is a short time horizon. A lot of your first jobs will be in supply chain operations before you move on to the higher level competence. So here are some things which come under supply chain operations. Allocate orders to inventory or production. Set order due days. Generate a pick list at warehouses. Allocate an order to a particular sh shipment. Set delivery schedules. Place replenishment orders. All these come under supply chain operation. So given that we have looked at all these things, we are gonna see how we are going to view a supply chain. There are two different ways you can look at a supply chain and we've got to look at both of them to kind of see how important the, uh, the planning part is. So the first part we're gonna talk about is cycle view. Here the process is divided into a series of cycles and we are really paying attention to the interface between two different stages. So cycle view is one view and the push-pull view is the second view. Here the process in a supply chain is divided depending on whether they are executed in response to customer order or in anticipation of the customer order. Pull initiated by the customer order and push initiated in performance in anticipation of customer order. So when you have more of a push, you have more uncertainty, whereas pull, you already have the customer order and there's less uncertainty. So here's an example. Here is a structure of the cycle view. We have the procurement cycle, which is between the supplier and manufacturer. 
Then you have the manufacturing cycle between the manufacturer and distributor, the replenishment cycle, which is between the di distributor and the retailer, and the customer order cycle between the retailer and the customer. So the cycle view defines the process involved and the owners of each process. It's useful when considering operational decisions because it specifies the roles and responsibilities of each member of the supply chain and the desired outcome for each process. So this kind of tells, for example, when you do the procurement, is the manufacturer responsible? Of course, the manufacturer places the order to the supplier and the supplier satisfies the procure procurement part, but essentially who is really responsible in this cycle, right? So you've got to look at the cycle view for the company you're studying. And then you have the push-pull view, which looks at the series of processes. And then if it's before the customer order, it's speculative, it's called a push process. And then if it's after the customer order, it's not very speculative, and then it's a reactive, and there is a pull process. And this gives you the push-pull boundary. In reality, when we are looking at the whole supply chain, it is important to look at both the cycle view and the push-pull view. So here is an example of Walmart. Here is the cycle view. You have the procurement, manufacturing, replenishment cycle. And the customer order comes exactly right here at the retailer side. So the pull process is very small and a vast majority is a push process. Now this is not necessarily true. You could have the customer order right here uh, between the manufacturing and procurement cycle. So it is important for you to study the com your company and see where the customer order comes and then map it to your cycle view. So finally, we're gonna look at some of the macro processes in a supply chain. And there are essentially three of them. We have the customer relationship management, which where all the process is at the interface between the firm and its customers, internal supply chain management, which is all process internal to the firm, and supplier relationship management, where all processes are at the interface between the firm and its suppliers. Now, integration among the three macro process is crucial for successful supply chain management. So let's take a look. Here for the supplier, supplier relationship management, the processes which we are looking at is sourcing, negotiating with the uh, supplier, buying, design collaboration, and supply collaboration. In the firm, the internal supply chain management comes to strategic planning, demand planning, supply planning fulfillment, and field service. Now for this class, we will be focusing a lot on demand planning and supply planning fulfillment. And finally, for customer relationship management, we'd be looking at the market, price, how much you can sell, customer support like call service, order management, et cetera. So we've kind of finished this chapter, chapter one. And in summary, we looked at the goal of the supply chain, explained the impact of supply chain decisions on the success of the firm. We looked at three supply chain decision phases and explained the significance of each one described the cycle push and pull views of a supply chain, and we class classified the supply chain macro processes in a firm.